We're on. Um, okay, so just to give you a bit of background to this, and this is all in the topic booklet, just looking at page five there, we've, we've identified quite a few types of reaction and, and that, that, that word types of reaction often gets confused with types of mechanism. Types of reaction is things like acid base, precipitation, uh, we've also had exothermic and endothermic, displacement reactions, thermal decomposition reactions, they're all types of reaction. So redox or reduction oxidation is a type of reaction. So redox reactions are ones that involve reduction and oxidation, yes. And your introduction to this, to, to, to redox, is really things reacting with oxygen, right? Your, your first time you, you light a, a bit of magnesium ribbon, it burns, it reacts with oxygen. We say, well, the magnesium's oxidised. Or you leave an iron nail in some water and it goes rusty overnight. It's, it's oxidised. And oxidation is short for reacting with oxygen. But there's other reactions like if I reacted magnesium with chlorine, say, where for the magnesium, it's, it's a very similar process, whether it's reacting with oxygen or reacting with chlorine. Because in both cases, the magnesium starts off as a metal and it ends up as two plus ions. And it does so because it's lost electrons. So rather than saying oxidation is a reaction with oxygen, which is a very narrow definition, if we expand that and say oxidation is loss of electrons, well then suddenly we can include other reactions that don't involve uh, oxygen, but which are very similar, and then we can have them all under one umbrella and we can use that to, to, to help us understand what's going on in, in, in more reactions. So the, the first job of redox really is, is working out what's being oxidised and what's being reduced. And that's what we'll be introducing our, our toolkit for today, that the oxidation states toolkit. But just to just to see why why we need it, it in a reaction like magnesium reacting with oxygen, it's pretty obvious, right? Magnesium has reacted with oxygen, so the magnesium has been oxidized. Or a situation like this, even where we can say, oh, we have Mg atoms on the left and Mg two plus ions on the right, so it's lost electrons, so it's been oxidized. So again, that's fairly obvious. But if we have a more complicated reaction, um, say copper reacting with nitric acid to make copper nitrate and NO2 and water, and then we'll probably need to have a four there and a two there or something. So in a reaction like that, it's a lot less obvious what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. Does anyone want to guess? Nitrogen being oxidized. Uh, why, why would you say that? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's, that's a pure guess. Well, um, nitrogen is one of the two elements that's uh, involved, yeah. but uh, no, it's actually being, it's actually being reduced. Copper is being oxidized, yeah. Um, I mean, the fact that copper starts off as an element and ends up as ions, well, that's similar to magnesium starting off as an element and ending up as ions. So uh, a bit of chemical intuition would tell you that that's being oxidized. But to work out that nitrogen is being reduced, it's a lot less obvious. And not only that, but the nitrogen that goes to form the nitrate ions hasn't changed at all. It's only the nitrogen in nitrate that forms NO2 gas that's been reduced. So to spot changes like that, to be able to identify those elements, uh, requires a bit sort of a bit of insider knowledge. 
and and we'll learn about about why that's that's important. Um, let's just give you another example, and, and I think this might be in the. Oh no, I can't see it. Um, um, sorry, that's the wrong equation. <laughs> let's try again. That's better. I knew, I knew it had um, iron and chlorine in it. Right. Um, if we're balancing an equation like that, and, and I'm not going to, um, you know, embarrass anybody by, by picking it on, it on anyone and getting you to, to get the answer wrong on purpose, but you can see that a, a slightly simplistic approach would be to say, okay, I've got two chlorines here, I need two chlorines here. So if I put a two over there, it's balanced. It's not balanced, and the reason it's not balanced is we haven't balanced it in terms of the electrons that are coming and going. And if you, if you look carefully, you'll see iron is losing an electron to go from 2 plus to 3 plus. It's lost one electron. Whereas chlorine, or both chlorines, are gaining an electron. So each chlorine has gained an electron. So chlorine needs two electrons, but iron's only given away one. It doesn't balance in terms of electrons. Now you might think, oh my god, I've got to, I've got to balance equations in terms of electrons now. But it was hard enough just doing it with elements. But actually, it's going to make things easier because what we're going to learn is a new way of balancing equations where we use electrons to help us, and and um, that will make you know, balancing equations like, like this one um, actually easier in, in the long run. So it's a, it's a, it's a toolkit that, that's going to help us. Okay. Um, oh, I rubbed out oxidation states. That was my title. Okay, so we're going to run through the um, the rules for oxidation states now. Um, oxidation states is a is a it's what's called a formal system, which is like it's just a set of rules. It's something that people have made up, um, as opposed to say temperature. If I if I stick a thermometer into a beaker of water and I measure its temperature, I'm measuring something real, aren't I? What, what am I actually measuring? Interesting thought. What, what are we measuring when I, when I stick a thermometer into water? What actual quantity am I measuring? So we've just done a question, just done a topic on kinetics. Yeah. The amount of heat being released. Heat being released. No, I'm not looking at temperature change. I'm literally just sticking a thermometer in a beaker of water. Could you could you just put that in slightly more scientific language? Okay, we need one more word added to that. Can anyone? No, we're we're not we're not looking at rate. We're just measuring the temperature of a beaker of water. No, there's no collisions. When we're not we don't have a reaction. It's just a beaker of water. We're sticking a thermometer in. It's 22 degrees. But what is that? What is that 22 degrees a measure of? Kinetic energy is right, but we need one more word. Think about yeah, Maxwell Boltzmann distributions. What what is it that goes up if I increase the temperature? Most probable. Most probable is is pretty close. Mean is what I was looking for. Yeah, you're, you're measuring the average kinetic energy of particles. Yeah, wherever it is. Um, so that's, that's a real thing, right? Oxidation state is not a real thing. There's no meter that I can stick into a solution that will measure oxidation state for me. pH is another real thing. You can have a pH meter, stick it in, and find out the pH of the solution. 
but oxidation state is not real. It's a formal system, but it gives us a, a measure of the number of electrons um, taking part in bonding. But, but even then, that's, that's not always going to work. That's just, that's just a helpful way of thinking about it. It's really a set of rules. It's a set of rules that you're going to have to apply. So you're going to have to know, and there's seven of them. So you're going to have to learn them and apply them consistently, which will be the main part of today's lesson. Okay. If you don't mind, rather than writing oxidation state seven times, I'm going to use OS, but that, that's not a, um, uh, a, 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 an abbreviation that's used for oxidation state. That's just me being lazy. Um, oxidation state of elements, by definition, is zero. Elements, I mean things in their elemental state, like chlorine gas or hydrogen gas or a teaspoonful of pure iron, talking about something, a magnesium ribbon, or an oxygen gas, something that's in its elemental state. Okay. For ions, the oxidation state simply equals the charge on the iron. So far, so good. So if I had magnesium 2 plus, its oxidation state equals plus 2. If I had Cl minus, its oxidation state equals minus 1. Notice that like um, charges, we usually put a plus or, and a minus, obviously, but we usually write the plus for positive oxidation states because the charge is so, uh, the, the sign is so important. Same as um, like enthalpy change, right? The, the plus and minus is very important. Okay, moving on. Um, compounds. Total of... Um, sorry, that's rule number four. <laughs> I'll try and get these in the right order. Compounds containing... Groups one, two, or three elements. The oxidation state is plus one, plus two, or plus three, respectively. What does that mean? Well, it means if I've got a lithium compound, we look at that, well, lithium is in group one, so we say, right, so lithium has an oxidation state of plus one, which isn't that surprising because that's the charge that the iron would have if lithium formed the iron that it always forms. It's in group one, it forms plus one ions. Um, if I have magnesium oxide, then magnesium's in group two, so it's got an oxidation state of plus two. Again, hopefully none of this seems Particularly surprising. Okay. Hello, yes? So if it was Mg plus, it's like you know how the ion is the, so the second one, how it's like Mg plus two. If it was Mg plus one, would it be plus one? Or it's like. Plus yeah, except magnesium doesn't form plus one ions. But transition metals can form ions of various charges. Yeah, so you could have, so iron two plus has an oxidation state of plus two, whereas iron three plus has an oxidation state of plus three. Just depends on the iron charge. We'll, we'll come back to transition metals because um, they're the ones to watch for because they can vary their, their charge and therefore vary their oxidation state. Right, this is what I was thinking I was doing for number three, but here we are, number four. The total of all the oxidation states for a compound adds up to zero. This is the rule you're going to use most of all.
So, for example, let's 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 use some examples that we we all know. Let's say we had sodium chloride and we didn't know anything about oxidation states or charges. So we go right, sodium chloride. Well, sodium's in group one, so anything that's a compound of a group one element, that group one element has an oxidation state of plus one. The sodium's plus one. Chlorine, therefore, must be minus one because the total has to add up to zero. Again, that shouldn't come as a huge surprise because Cl minus is the standard ion of chlorine. Um, yeah. Uh, I've got another example. Okay. Right. Really important rules. Hydrogen. In compounds equals plus one. Now there is an exception to this, although it's not something we get into until next year. There's a bunch of compounds called hydrides. For example, sodium hydride, NaH, is a compound. Now, if we use the rules, well, sodium in a compound, that's rule number three. Sodium would have an oxidation state of plus one. The total for a compound, all the oxidation states have to add up to zero, rule number four. So H in this case would be minus one. But that's an exception. And again, I probably won't mention hydrides again until we talk about their use in chemistry in uh, probably about the middle of October. We'll get back to it. Okay. But I, I just mentioned that because... Um, uh, that will come up. Every other compound that you're going to see is going to be plus one. So let's say I've got NH3 and I want to know the oxidation state of nitrogen in that. Well, we can assume that hydrogen's plus one, as it will be for everything else other than hydrides. Um, the total of all the oxidation states has to add up to zero. We have to take into account the fact that we've got three hydrogens as well. So hydrogen's contributing plus three. Nitrogen is what it is. And the total has to add up to zero. So nitrogen's going to be minus three. Okay, we're still with it. Two more rules. Rule number six is very similar to rule number five, except now we're talking about oxygen in compounds. And oxygen in compounds is generally going to be minus two. Notice that that corresponds to the ion as well. The oxide ion is O2 minus, isn't it? The hydrogen ion is H plus. Sadly, there's an exception to this as well. And this is one that we will be coming across quite a lot this year. Compounds called peroxides. So if you come across hydrogen peroxide, it turns your hair a daring shade of white. Um, and we, we use it occasionally in chemistry. Uh, so let's just, let's just use the rules. So rule number five, hydrogen in compounds is plus one. Sorry, hydrogen. Rule number four, the total of all the oxidation states has to add up to zero. I've got two plus ones. So oxygen must be... No, minus one. minus one. There's two of them. Okay. 
So peroxides, oxygen is minus one. But everything else, it's going to be minus two. Okay, so now, we're, now we've got almost all of the really important rules. We can get into the guts of this. So HNO3, what's the oxidation state of nitrogen in HNO3? Well, let's go through it. Hydrogen's plus one. Nitrogen is whatever it is. We don't know yet. Oxygen is minus two. There's three oxygens. So oxygen in total is contributing minus six. Hydrogen, there's only one of those. And because it's a compound, the total has to add up to zero. So what's nitrogen? Plus five. Now again, that doesn't mean nitrogen's got a plus five ion. That's not what it means. It, it means that nitrogen's using five electrons in bonding. Yeah. Um, but uh, apart from that, it doesn't really mean a lot. It might, nitrogen might not even be using five electrons in bonding. It's just a number that's going to help us solve problems. Think about it like that. It's more like, it's more like maths than, than chemistry, really. Oxidation states. Uh, rule number seven, I'm just going to pop this over here. Rule number seven is kind of a combination of rule number six no, rule number four, sorry, and rule number two, and that's compound ions. You know what a compound ion is? What's a compound ion? Ion in a compound. Could you give me an example? <laughs> hey? And add O4. Could you give me an example of, of one that you've come across a bit more often? Where do you come across compound ions? There's about four that you come across all the time. Ammonia is not an ion. Oh, okay. Sulfate? Sulfate. Sulfate is SO4, as in copper sulfate. Yeah. Sulfate is SO4, and it's got a two minus charge. So it's a compound because we've got more than one type of element combined together, and it's an ion because it's got a two minus charge. So in sulfate, the total of all the oxidation states has to add up to the charge on the ion, which is minus two. So if oxygen's minus two, rule number six, and there's four of them, so that adds up to minus eight. And then if sulfur is whatever it is, the total has to add up to minus two now, because that's the charge on the iron. So sulfur is plus six. Okay, let's do another one. And um, I'll squeeze it in here. Carbonate. I'll let you think about that one for a moment. What's the chart? What's the oxidation state of carbon in carbonate? Plus four. Because oxygen's minus two, there's three of them, so that contributes minus six. Total's got to be minus two, so carbon must be plus four. Okay. Right, so let's have, a, let's have a practice at that and try and embed some of those skills. So we're going to go to exercise one, question one. And notice the first question's about sulphur and the second question's about nitrogen. So you start to learn that nitrogen and sulphur are a couple of elements that can change their oxidation state readily. Right. Sodium's either going to be zero or plus one. But nitrogen and sulfur can be all sorts of things. So uh, trying to apply those rules, I'll leave them up on the board there and see how far you get in exercise four.